Gunshots going on. Oh, they're gunshots. <laughs> That's really cool though. It's all made out of wood. Um, this wolf was found and taken to a local veterinarian who wanted to help this wolf. And so while he nursed her to full health, he tried to find somebody who could keep a wolf full time because he did not have the ability to do so. Um, he called around a few places, and the few places that he called either told him, sorry, you can't take him in, or some of them just gave him a whole, uh, cold shoulder, never called him back, and some of them just straight up hung up the phone on him. Vultures are awesome birds. They do a lot of great things once you get past the breath. Uh, there's a lot of pros <laughs> to having vultures around. Um, if there weren't vultures, there would be a lot more things on the side of the road, nasty and decaying and everything like that. Plus, birds can't get rabies. Oh, wow. You know, when an animal dies with rabies, and a vulture eats it, it actually removes that rabies uh, from being in, back in the wild. So vultures are so really, pretty. really cool birds. Uh, I've worked with them, so I'm a, I'm a vulture advocate as well. <laughs> but uh, he called her up and she said, look, I've dealt with birds. I've not really dealt with exotic canines before. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to help, but I at least want to come down and see this wolf. As a dog. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever seen a dog before? <laughs> yes. What's your name? So they have 13. Remington, yes. Never. Remington. So I've never seen you <laughs> uh, but, um, and if every time you said your name that happened, I would just, it would make my day. But, uh, yeah. Exposure, it might not be on the right half. This is though. Kaya, this is the gray rotated, speckled one. Uh, depending on uh, where it is. For instance, these two are rotating because one of our sliding gates in the back sticks. And Miko really likes to find ways to steal his mother figure's food. Uh, so we have a rotating because she's alone. <laughs> Every time you say her name, she pops up. Dog, uh, oh, she's a wolf dog. A capital a, uh, Kaya has a lot of husky in her. Uh, a lot of husky. Uh, but Kaya is legally labeled as a wolf dog, and she was being kept... Uh, by the way, she also has one of the saddest stories. Uh, so I kind of start you guys off sad. And one of the happiest stories is actually towards the end. Kaya was uh, labeled as a wolf dog um, and was owned by a guy in uh, Nebraska uh, who kept her chained to his front porch because she did not potty train to the side of the Oh my god. Um, being an energetic, lively animal who has never met a stranger in her entire life, she managed to keep slipping the collar. One day when she slipped the collar, somehow, nobody's entirely sure, uh, she ended up with an 8-inch long 
long gash that wrapped around the back of her neck and was so deep you could actually see bone. Um, he got her back, he took a look at her. She was malnourished and so she wasn't feeding her well. She was not well groomed or taken care of. Um, and now she had this extremely large gash in the back of her neck all while she was a puppy. He thought if he took her to the veterinarian to get looked at, he was going to get hit with animal abuse charges. So he didn't. Instead, his solution was to take her inside the house, try to close the wound himself with an industrial staple gun. Oh my god. He got god. very seriously infected, and Kaya got very, very <sighs> sick, and people. just stuck her back out of the yard. Um, the neighbors were furious. They were already mad that this lively energetic puppy was being kept chained to a porch, much less to see that lively energetic puppy pretty much do a 180. It's going to be really tough. He said, I will work through the night if I need to. As long as I can work and help this animal, I will. Uh, but I'm not. It's, it's looking pretty bleak. Obviously, he was able to save her life. Uh, in fact, he did such an amazing job. Even before her hair grew back, he actually had her sutured back up in a way that you couldn't even tell there was really a scar there around the back of her neck. There's, I don't know. They have a very interesting dynamic between the two of them. Uh, here's the way. Nico and Kaya playdates are a lot like siblings pillow fighting. It's a lot of fun at first. Up until one swings a little bit too hard, so the other one has to escalate a little bit harder, and then it just falls out from there. Um, now, they have been days, they, they've gone, and they've been able to spend, like, days together without issue. And there's days where they've been able to spend minutes together without issue, uh, before they start intentionally picking on each other with the sole decision to get on each other's nerves. Look at that one's in the tunnel. Mm -hmm. Oh, he looks big. Look at that one under the giant old wood chair. Yeah. So, for the Haldites, the electrical thing wolves are nocturnal. They are not. Wolves are what are called crepuscular, which means they're active most at dawn and dusk. So this is sort of the time where you'll start to see some of them getting a little bit more active. But our guys are definitely on a little bit more of a diurnal schedule, which means daytime. Uh, humans are diurnal, and there's a reason for that. So when we try to partner them up, the first thing we do is make sure they make good neighbors. If there's a lot of fence fighting, a lot of aggression, if they don't make good neighbors, they're not going to make good roommates. After a period of recorded watching and observation for them, there was just together, a squirrel that went into the enclosure. We can usually just leave them together at that point. Ta Taylor Lumsel's record is before Romulus it. on her early play dates was about two minutes. See her. The minute that gate would go up, she was on the boy's like, She's white trying to find that squirrel. She was in love. She wanted to groom him. She wanted to play with him. She wanted to lay on top of him. <laughs> the only thing. Look at all of them sleeping. Mm -hmm. His name is McQuaid. He's the youngest the one. So, now, uh, they, uh, they bought McQuaid at the same time as they got a German Shepherd puppy, and he was growing at about a times and a half the speed of the German Shepherd, and he was also becoming very destructive. They estimate over the few months they've had him, he probably did eight to nine thousand dollars worth of damage to their house. A few professional trainers out of the house, and they realized that they have They're all waking up now. Look at him, he looks so sleepy. Look at that sleepy face. <gasps> so beautiful. I like the brindle colors. So pretty. Arcalis. And Ryu. No. <laughs> he tilted his head back watching us fucking. 
Yeah. Uh, the signs here are also swapped. The girl in the back over here is Koa. Uh, Koa is a very unique girl. Uh, she has one of our biggest exceptions in that she is the only animal that you guys will see today who has not been, a, she was not ever an attempt at private pet ownership. Koa has spent her entire life balancing around animal care facilities from a breeder to a few private zoos to eventually she landed up in a municipal zoo up north who had an exhibit that was designed for a three pack of wolves. And so they were shopping around for a three pack of wolves that were already paired and everything like that. Um, and so they're looking for this three pack. This private zoo pops up and says, oh, you're looking for three wolves? We have three wolves, let us send them to you. And so they get everything co covered. They deal with the transport. They put the three wolves on exhibit. And then they realize that these three wolves have never been together a day in their life. They call the place back and they're like, oh, you wanted a three pack. I thought you just wanted three wolves. Unfortunately, we've already filled their spot and we can't really take them back. So sorry. Um, and it was a problem because the two females hated each other, oh. uh, which is not too uh, atypical for wolves. Uh, typically, they've uh, so the family that had times, Alex before set up so. a trust uh, fund for him. Obvious reasons, uh, but they they were big, big and are still big supporters of Alex uh, as, as a whole. Uh, the reason I really love Alex's story is because it kind of highlights the other side of it. Unlike the Calypsos and the Kayas, which have very sad stories, Alex is a story of a family who had a lot of love and a lot of resources to dedicate to an exotic animal, and they still could not make it work, um, which just sometimes has a tendency to happen. Um, I mean, right now, the number one uh, the number one thing we get uh, as far as a reason an animal needs to be uh, relocated is divorce, uh, which might not happen, hopefully doesn't happen to any of you guys, uh, but it is one of the ways that life just throws curveballs that people aren't expecting. I mean, let's look, look at where we're at now to where we were a year and a half ago, right? So, But on that note, uh, you guys are future heroes here because you guys just being able to come out, even if you, I mean, I know some of you guys have already shopped at the gift shop. Even if you don't buy a single thing, you don't do a sponsorship, a, you know, extra donation, Dream. you don't um, sponsor that uh -huh. brick or anything like that. Just by coming out today, you guys have made a, a sizable difference in these guys' lives. Uh, and I'm not just saying that to say that. Uh, everything we've been able to do over the past 18 years is because of people just like you guys. You guys are working with Scully. You guys are, are, allow us to provide the quality of animal care that we try to strive to. We did buy a lot from the gift shop. Like As an organization, <laughs> we do not have any grants, state or I love collecting or things from the souvenir shops. Yet, nor do we have any like sort of like Leonardo DiCaprio <laughs> celebrity donors where he just walked into a wolf sanctuary, dropped a cool five mil, and said, please never contact me again. Um, and I'm not jealous about that to this day. Uh, but, you know, nothing like that. Um, everything we've been able to do is from people just like you guys and the support you guys have given us. So, you guys coming out and visiting us, even if it's just to see wolves and have some hot dogs and or s'mores, uh, you know, that does make a difference. And you guys are really what kind of bridged that gap and been able to let us do uh, what we've been able to do. So, because they can't say it, I will. I want to thank you guys from all the bottom of their hearts and the bottom of our hearts for coming out today. Um, the campfire and everything like that. I see it's going right now, so mm -hmm. we'll go over that. Um, so we're going to get our food. Yeah, so with huskies, uh, campfire going already. in the morning. Wonder if that's her 
wake up call. Well, good morning. It's a nice way to wake up. We're about to get our tent down and we're going to be packing up and going home. So, thank you guys for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.